This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church. There are three in-person worship opportunities. Tuesday mornings at 10, there is a Bible study. 6.30 on Wednesdays, there is a Bible study in Karen and in English. And Sundays at 10.30, there is a Bible study in the Book of Romans. And Hafleen is leading that study. I hope that you have enjoyed this wonderful weather that we've been having. Blessings and peace to you all. today to choose whom it is we would serve. So we come to you asking for your wisdom and guidance. Help us always to choose the way of God, the way of justice and mercy. Help us always to choose the life of God, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us always to choose the hope of God, to remember that our hope is found in you and not in the powers and leaders of this world. Help us always to choose the peace of God, for God's peace is with those who seek 
and pursue justice. We come today to worship you, who we choose to serve. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in singing, How Great Is Our God. that you have given to us along the way, even those we may not have recognized. We thank you for the beauty of the world around us in all seasons and all places. We thank you for this community that we journey with and for all the friends and family who walk beside us on the way. We thank you for providing us with what we need. And we ask for your forgiveness when we have failed to be grateful. And we thank you for the journey itself, 
for all the things that we have learned, for the laughter and the memories that we have shared, and for the chance to travel through this life together with you at our side. We pray today for healing. We pray for our world in the middle of this pandemic and pray that you will be with all of those who are sick and all those who are grieving, with all those who have suffered losses and all those who feel isolated and alone. We pray for healing for our planet and for all those suffering losses from wildfires and hurricanes and other natural disasters. We pray for healing from violence. And we pray for all those who grieve for lives that have been senselessly lost. We pray for healing from division. Our elections this week point to the deep divide in our country. We pray that there may be healing from all of this brokenness and that people may come together to find what they have in common, that there may be listening and understanding, sharing and reconciliation, healing and hope. We pray that in all that happens, that we may remember it is you we choose to follow, and that in all we do, we seek your will and your kingdom. In all humility now, we ask you to heal us from our brokenness. Forgive us when we fail to love, Walk with us in our joy and our pain. Be our light that shines in the darkness and brings us hope. We praise you always for your faithfulness as we journey together. Amen. And now you all join me in saying the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. The Nenex, I will tell so sweet, I'm that I love when I put on my look on the power of any. You should sort of kiss you, a super dear to let that eh, not so much silly to let the sick one. Ah, not I should do for a poor year, but I still have one to pass you ski. No one is still up by the kid up or a cool. เราวัดสิญญาโกเราปากเวลีดิพานีเราวัดเตปาลาตาเลยอยู่อเมญญาเราเราจะอยู่ชื่อว่าพระองค์นี้อยู่อิสลักษาซีดีเลบลิลังส
ดอไม่มีใจเลยที่ไม่เลยที่ก็มาอยู่อาจารย์ดอสารพาเลยที่ป่ามาจารย์เลยชิมว่าว่าบ้าเขามีกี่ว่ามุ่งพูเลยตัวที่สั่งเลือกบวกสารพามีกี่คือเจริญมีสติพาเลยที่ก็มาจารย์กี่ไม่มีเยอะไรเลยพ่อไอ้ผู้ปกมาอยู่อาจารย์ดอดอพ่อมุ่งสิสิราสิวระมอบดูจะเลือกได้อยู่อาจารย์ดอดอปกมาเกิดสารพาจารย์กี่เอเดียยูอาเปสันีมีวาลาดีให้ตอบว่าดอกปานพาลเอกุบุตรบูดอเลปากุกวาฮิบูดอมาตาลาพาดูเลปเมียนาได้ลูกว่าลูกว่าลูกเคลเลปปอดอบุญญาดอเลกี้เอวามุกลาลูกเป็นเล็กข้อเก่าหนิล้อได้ยูอาฮารุกีวามุลูกเป็นเมียนาวามุกุลูกเอาเลชิวกอบุนิล้อเวดามกมาสกยูอาตาลาเอเดียเอวดามีสัลโออามี May the words of my mouth And the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in Thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As we finish our 12-week series of journeying to the Promised Land, we're going to jump ahead in the Book of Joshua. Last week we talked about the miraculous crossing of the Jordan River into the land, but that was not the end of Joshua's story. There was much to do to possess the land. He would meet a man holding a sword, who announced that he was the commander of God's angel armies. The walls of Jericho would need to come tumbling down. There were several military encounters that would take place, and in chapter 10, Joshua commanded his son to still, to be still, to not move until the battle that they were winning could be won. And then the land needed to be divided up after the 31 kings were defeated, and they needed to be divided equitably among the 12 tribes. When the dust had settled and Joshua himself was very old, he spoke to the people, much as Moses spoke in his farewell. Joshua said these words: "You have seen everything that the Lord your God has done to all the nations because of you." And then he said, "Any one of you can make a thousand men run away." Because the Lord is fighting for you, just as God promised. Be careful then to love the Lord your God. Joshua 24. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem. He called the elders, the leaders, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they came into the presence of God. Joshua said to the people, "This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, has to say: Long ago, your ancestors lived on the other side." Of the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. One of those ancestors was Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor. When I took Abraham, your ancestor, from the land across the Euphrates and led him through the whole land of Canaan. Continuing to speak for God, Joshua reminded them of all that God had done for them. He spoke about the promises to Abraham. To Isaac and to Jacob, he retold how God had delivered them from slavery in Egypt, all the terrible and amazing things that had happened there. He reminded them of how God had miraculously provided for them to survive in the wilderness with enough to eat, with enough to drink, and over and over again he reminded them of how God had given them victories, how gracious and merciful God had been to them. Continuing in verse 13, I gave you a land that you had never worked, and cities that you had not built, and now you are living there, and eating grapes from vines that you did not plant, and olives from trees that you did not plant. Now then, Joshua continued, honor the Lord, serve Him sincerely and faithfully, get rid of gods which your ancestors used to worship in Mesopotamia and in Egypt. And serve only the Lord. If you are not willing to serve Him, decide today whom you will serve: the gods of your ancestors, worshipped in Mesopotamia, or the gods of Amorites, in whose land you are now living. As for my family and me, we will serve the Lord. The people replied, "We would never leave the Lord to serve other gods. The Lord our God brought our fathers and out of slavery in Egypt, and we saw the miracles that He performed." He kept us safe wherever we went among the nations through which we passed. As we advanced into this land, the Lord drove out the Amorites who lived here, and so we will serve the Lord. 
He is our God. To this, Joshua responds, and this is surprising, surprised me 3,000 years after the fact. He said, Joshua said to the people, but you may not be able to serve the Lord after they had said all these things, because he is a holy God and will not forgive your sins. He will tolerate no rivals, and if you leave him to serve foreign gods, he will turn against you and punish you. He will destroy you, even though he was good to you before. The people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Joshua had been living with the people a long time. He had seen how stiff-necked they could be. He had seen Moses struggle to keep this unruly mob on the right path. He knew how changeable they could be. Joshua had heard the people make and break commitments before. This time they protested, No, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua told them, You are your own witnesses to the fact that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they said, we are witnesses. Then get rid of those foreign gods you have, he demanded, and pledge your loyalty to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people then said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God. We will obey his commands. And so Joshua made a covenant for the people that day, and there at Shechem, he gave them laws and rules to follow. This time, Joshua intended on keeping their feet to the fire. Joshua had been with Moses at Sinai. He had served Moses and God at the tent of meeting. He knew firsthand how awesome and wonderful God was. God was holy, and God could have nothing to do with sin. This was a God who would not tolerate rivals. Divided loyalties were betrayals, were betrayals to the God of Joshua. God was as fierce as God was tender. The people would need to be loyal in ways that they lived day in and day out. They would need to be faithful to God alone. Joshua challenged them to recommit themselves boldly, without reservation. This was not a casual warning against idolatry. They needed a change of heart. He said they would need to fear God alone. They would need to serve God sincerely, and they would need to throw out all the other gods. This was to be a day of decision. How would the people respond to Joshua's challenge? As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. This was a day of decision, and it was taking place in a sacred place. Many years before, Abraham had built an altar at Shechem. His grandson, Jacob, had bought the land there and had dug a well that still provided water for his descendants. And the body of Joseph that had been brought from Egypt was buried in the earth that his father had once owned. In this sacred place, solemn promises were made and idols were buried as a demonstration of their commitment. A large stone was placed under an oak tree that would serve as witnesses for years to come. Some scholars believe that at Shechem, there was an annual holy ceremony of renewal, renewal of the covenant that Joshua had written. All the tribes would gather there and as a community commit themselves to the one Lord. The ceremony would help sustain the unity and faith of community in the land of promise. As long as Joshua lived, the people of Israel served the Lord, and after his death they continued to do so as long as those leaders were alive, who had seen them for themselves, everything that the Lord had done for them, for Israel. At weddings, brides and grooms make solemn vows. Solemn vows to love and honor and cherish only one another from this day forward. The wedding day is a day of decision that will impact the rest of their lives. At the time, however, <laughs> How little they know about the challenges making such outrageous promises would be. All these promises in front of family and friends. The beautiful words bring tears to mother's eyes, but these promises will only be true over time. Day after day after day. Putting aside all others in sickness and in health, for richer, for poor, their whole lives. And in so doing, they will discover the deeper meaning of the commitment they have made 
and will fulfill their vows. Our relationship with God is an exclusive one. God is a jealous God whose desire for us is rooted in a deep love. It's not enough to honor and serve God, there has to be a throwing out of other gods as well. We need to fear God alone. We need to serve God sincerely. We need to throw out other idols that make claims on our loyalty. What does it mean to choose and to honor and fear God alone? It means to intentionally and continually, day by day, place God at the center of our lives. God is more than a ruler of our Sundays. Honoring God remember, is remembering the Sabbath to keep it holy. It also means keeping our lives in right relationship with our Creator all week long. What does it mean to serve God sincerely? The prophet Micah answered to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. What does it mean to throw out idols? Moses, Moses warned the people, you shall have no other gods before our one God. Now, other gods often show themselves as self-centered desires for power, for pleasure, for control. And this replaces the intention and will of God at the center of our lives. This is what idols are. Things that claim a loyalty that belong to God alone. We know that the people of Israel would later fail to serve God. Kings and nations would turn away from God, and the people would be exiled from the land that God had provided for them. We know how difficult it is to fear and serve God alone. But we also know the consequences of separation from God and from our true lives. Sin drives a wedge between us and God that we are unable to overcome ourselves. In that alienation, we experience unhappiness. We experience a hopelessness. The Apostle Paul knew about this struggle and described it in Romans 7, 24 and 25. What an unhappy man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Thanks be to God, who does this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our renewal happens as we confess our faith, as we acknowledge that only God can bring us back to our senses and to our true lives. Paul continued, he condemned sin in human nature by sending his own son, who came with a nature like man's, sinful nature, to do away with sin. God did this so that the righteous demands of the law might be fully satisfied in us, who live according to the Spirit. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. Faith in Christ and reliance upon the Holy Spirit empowers us to keep God at the center of our lives, allows us to serve wholeheartedly and to put aside idols that are clamoring for our attention and our loyalty. There come times in our lives, sacred times, holy times, at which we are invited to make a decision to trust God and let that trust control our lives and our actions. There are days when we, like Joshua's people, are challenged to honor the Lord and serve Him sincerely and faithfully. Is this a day, is this the day to renew your covenant with your Lord? Loving God, we pray that we would be up to the challenge of coming before you and claiming that you indeed are our God. As for me and my family, we will serve you alone. We will set aside other gods. And we will continue to live and act in faith. Lord, we know that this is the life that you intend for us. Help each of us, Lord, to make that commitment again, to follow, and to discover in that commitment what the true life that you offer us is all about. Lord, we offer ourselves to you in this moment. 
in this sacred moment, in this time, to choose. Amen. and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the comfort and the strength of the Holy Spirit be and abide in you now and forever. Amen, and go in peace. <laughs>